Flight boss, bitch. You know. For sure. You're not listening to the mind of an Atari's moon. I'm the Archangel Uriel, and I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucker responsibilities. And right now, we're going to talk about who was the first man. Who was the first man? Now, the reason I titled it, Who Was the First Man? Because that's going to be the only way you guys know how to understand it based upon the limitations of the language that you guys use. So, you see what I'm saying? The language that you use is very limited. So, you know what I'm saying? You could be getting into arguments. You could be getting into debates. You could be indoctrinated. You could get into philosophies. You could be lost into a religion that you're heavily emotionally invested into and, and really invest your life and spiritually damn yourself for things you truly do not even know the true meaning behind. And based upon the language, it already has pre-meanings and pre-terms to these words. So you're putting your spirit on a cross for words and terms that you truly don't even, don't even know the true meaning behind it. You just take the terms that was given to you and the meanings behind it. And then when you hear certain things like Jesus rose from the dead and really get emotionally invested behind that, you need to know that you're spiritually damned. And you, you're spiritually casting spells on your spirit and putting your spirit in another cage. And you're already in a double cage as a spirit. So you need to know that before you get lost into anything when we're talking about worship and fellowship and things of that nature. Now, when we're talking about man, right? Because reason why I say there may be lost versions of epistemologies and apologetics and philosophies of these terms and words. So we need to break things down to the clearest level before we get lost into the physical representations of things. Because on this channel, we do not turn Starman into A-Man. We do not turn Starman into A-Man. And you're going to know what I mean by that throughout the duration of this video. So for the most part, who was the first man? Who is the wrong term is the wrong phrase. Because for the most part... Here's where we get lost into the limitation of language because you'll hear people that that's religious doubt. And then they, when they hear things like the sun, they correlate it to the begotten one. You know what I'm saying? And then when you hear people talk about it as S-U-N, it's more correlated to what it's supposed to be, the light. You know what I'm saying? But they're, acting, they're pointed towards one star. And calling that the sun. But for the most part, it's just another term for light. So you need to know in the Bible, there's going to be a lot of meanings and terms that they call that if you get lost into physicality, if you get lost into the world, you'll be lost into the ways of the world. Thinking that they're talking about humans and shit in the world when it's actually talking about different durations of light. You see what I'm saying? And you have macro lights all the way to uh, micro lights. And when we get to the micro light, the first micro light will be the atom. So that would be the first man. But like I said, on this channel, we don't turn star man into a man. We don't turn light into an actual man and get lost into all these epistemologies of it. Because for the most part, here's where you get the lostness of the Adam and Eve story. Or even to the Egyptian days, the Atum and new story and things of that nature. To the point you need to know it's all correlated to the Atom. Just like scientists are talking about it. But they're lost also because they don't know how Adam is derived. And throughout this video, you're getting ready to hear it right now from Archangel Uriel. <laughs> so, it ain't who is the first man, it's what was the first man. And the first man was a thought form. Now, remind you, I told you, I didn't say first spirit. I said the first man. So, there's a lot of spirits that created a bunch of different realms of realities. But the spirit that y'all like to follow, this demonic spirit, it like to create man in his image so man before you get lost into the physical representations of getting lost into this hell it trapped you in it made you it made you uh get lost into biology so as a spirit you got trapped inside of a hell and that's what the spirit wanted to do create a body or a world but before we get into that you need to understand this before people want to call me pseudo right when we're talking about the first thought form, that's what create light. Now, spirits have created a lot of different things. This one wanted to create man, a.k.a. man is the masculine version in all realms. So before, before we get lost into a thought and stay in that thought so long to the point it materialized into a realm of reality that can move slow enough vibrational-wise, you need to know that when we think about uh, man, that's the first form of mass. Masculine energy. That's the first form of something having weight. And if it have weight, that means that's something that's being pushed out. So it's attached to the positive energy. Yang. So once mass get pushed out, that's something that has weight now. But mass is light and weight. So when we correlate in light, we know light is correlated in the weight spectrum. So when something is light and weight, 
it has mass and when a group of mass come together it becomes the masses and that gives off the spectrum of what scientists call light or photons or things of that nature. So let's take it back a little bit, right? So when we talk about pushing out something, right? This is man. So man is just another word for mass, the masculine energy. So when we talk about externally pushing out something, right? This is thought forms, ideas, concepts. So a spirit that created an image, a thought form, an idea, that first thought, the first spirit that created the first thought, that was the first atom. That was the first man. That was the first masculine energy. That was the first men mentality. See what I'm saying? That was the first sun. The first. So now you're going to start to understand the concepts of why we call all these different things light. Atom will be like a micro version of light. The sun will be a more macro version of light to the atom. You know what I'm saying? So that means when thoughts get manifested, it curates and manifests into the realm of reality that we see today. And when a group of light come together into one position and spot that can spread out long enough, that means that waters vibrate very slow so you can take a vehicle within that realm of reality and experience what we call life. But for the most part, here's the thing. When we talk about the first man, the first ma the masculine energy, so you need to know what man is in general. So anytime you hear the terms man, men, man, even in the Bible, when they say angels showed up as men, like I said on this channel, we don't turn star man into a man. You know what I'm saying? We don't turn a star light into a man's the physical light so we could get lost into man philosophical points of views and shit like that in Abrahamic religions and shit. So you need to understand that. So when they say the angels usually showed up as men, it's saying angels is showing up as light. R remind you in the Bible, anytime you hear Jesus, Father, light, men, man, sons, these are micro, macro, different versions of light that they're trying to explain. And they're trying to get you to understand light rays and light spectrums. It's an astrology book on that end. Not the astrology book like the Zeitgeist or, or the or, or motherfucking astral theology. Because that shit is slightly wrong. That shit is have, most of it is wrong. But you need to understand where everything is coming from, from all civilizations. So once you understand this concept, you'll be able to understand things a lot more clearer. See what I'm saying? So now you don't have to be like, oh, and, and if you're a religious person, you got to hide from the text of saying Abraham killed his sons or something like that. Which you now you know is talking about killing mentalities, killing ideas, killing desires, killing any type of masculine energy that a spirit push off. So when a when a when a spirit push off positive energy, it push off it, it becomes masculine mass, which is a thought, and a thought is the first atom. A first mass, and when you got a group of thoughts coming together, it becomes the masses, and it, it gives off a light ray. And the more that happens, it can become a realm of reality. So you need to know, um, even when we're talking about circumstances of, hold on, make sure I ain't got no, I got enough time on this month. Yeah, cause look, cause for the most part, it's masculine, so it's more like left brain. Now the reason we call it man because it's external, it's not feeling, it's not you didn't receive or experience first. Um, but you do that first, but once you push something off, that lets you know why light is the second coming. Why we call light the second coming. And anything that's trying to take the light, that lets you know it's a form of second coming. You see what I'm saying? So understand that spirits get lost into the light. And you might be following a spirit that's trying to tell you the spirit is this light. And this light is just another imagery that a spirit is taking to blind you to give you another idea. Because light is information, idea, thought. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, you even need to understand this. Even in the Bible, because like the whole Christian uh, religion is based upon um, Jesus rising from the dead. So there are they are emotionally attached to that thought form. So they worship that thought form and whatever spirit created that thought form got them got them spiritually damned because they're going out casting stones on the other people and, the, and as spirits they truly do not know what they even talking about. You know what I'm saying? Because for the most part, like I said in the Bible, replace Jesus with light, replace man with light. Even when we talk about further father, this is going to give you the concept of why we even as being lost in the world come up with concepts of the uh the the founding fathers or 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 the higher philosophy or idea having more authority than the, than the lesser idea you see what i'm saying or filling in so that one will, will be will be perceived as the higher light or the higher sun or the fathers the further light you know what i'm saying so things of that nature the holy holy ghost is another lostness we're gonna get into because getting into that spectrum right now you need to understand this did jesus rise from the dead now Here's, here's where atheists and uh, religious people are, y'all both, 
y'all both are lost because y'all both of y'all philosophies are coming to false conclusions where you need to understand this y'all lost because of the language that y'all use where you need to understand i just explained to y'all that it's the light so replace jesus with light so now it says light rose from the dead so now you probably a religious apologetic. So now you are emotionally attached to an argument or something like that. So now you want to be a Satan. You want to be an opposer. But call me a Satan. Well, really, I'm just trying to give you the truth. Because if you was to understand that it's saying, okay, Jesus rose from the dead, it's saying light rose from the dead. So for the most part, a person's light, a person's influence, when a person's die, when a person die, they light, they influence their chakras, their Lucifers, their sons, their Jupiters, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Their mentalities, their mans, their sons of God. If you are a spirit and you have sons, you have lights, you have mentality. So these are your son, the son of your L, the son of your God. So for the most part, when a person flesh dies, they light rises from the dead. They Jesus rise from the dead. They solar plexus rise from the dead. They light rise from the dead. Their influence rise from the deadly flesh. So when you hear Jesus rose from the dead, you need to you need to know that it's saying light rose from the dead. You see what I'm saying? So for the most part, when something dies from the flesh, the influence rise out of it. So you don't have to get into no lost emotional arguments saying, no, Jesus did actually rose from the dead, from the flesh, and I believe in that, and that's why I'm a Christian. And now you lost. You're going to hell. See what I'm saying? You're not, you don't, you're not making any sense. You know what I'm saying? Because even if you want to get into the concept of saying, okay, well, you're, you're still talking about an actual person, and this they, they spirit just rose in, and that's what you're actually talking about. Well, this spirit is trying to tell you that it's the light, and the light is just a, a higher version of the physical realm of reality. Because what I'm going to tell you now is saying from the flesh, and that don't even necessarily make sense if you even try to make, make it make sense like that. You see what I'm saying? If it was an actual person. Because I told you it's an astrology book. So if you was to understand that it said Jesus rose from the dead, for the most part, when we're going through the spring period of time, and if we're calling the sun S-O, this S-O-N, the begotten one, it's really the S-U-N, and we're talking about it rising from the dead, then we know from the winter time, the sun is no longer beneath us. It's rising up on top of us, us being on earth. So we can experience springtime and we're experiencing the birth or something springing in to an existence. So when they say Jesus rose from the dead, it's actually saying motherfucker the sun rising from the motherfucker death period of winter. And it's leaving from the area that we are at or the, this fleshly fluid, which is the waters, the land, the trees and shit like that. The lower animalistic fleshly fluids. The sun is rising above that. Rising above all this death down here and ascending to the highest degree because the sun is exalted in the first house to bring a spring aka Jesus is exalted in the first house aka Jesus is ascending it rose from the from the death so it's really talking about that so before you even want to get into the higher version here's here's where a, the demonic spirit made y'all uh, follow it on a higher version of lostness the Holy Ghost because now the darkness y'all think that's behind the light. But really the light is the second coming. The light comes from the darkness and the spirit is trying to take y'all, blind y'all with the light to take you to its darkness. And you think it's heaven, but it's really hell. So now you think the Holy Ghost or the unseen or, or that shape and form is the actual, because it said, remember it said in, in y'all Bible, the spirit of God. So now it ain't even just the spirit, it ain't even just the spirit anymore. It's the spirit of something else. So now the spirit or the Holy Ghost is now a, a higher version of light. That's a higher version of getting lost. That's why that spirit was in darkness in the first place. Spiritual darkness, not physical darkness. So please, as a religious person, don't try to argue me about that because you know when you're in spiritual darkness. You know it has nothing to do with this. So if you're going to sit here and argue with me about this, the spirit at the beginning of your demonic Bible and say that it's talking about fleshly fluid and that knowing goddamn well ain't no, ain't no representation in your Genesis Bible saying that spirit was in a body yet. See what I'm saying? In a physical body yet. So what kind of, what kind of light we talking about now? Oh, but you're about to make up something else, right? I know. But look, check this out. When we're talking about uh, these energies, uh, the masculine and things of that nature, when say Jesus rose from the dead, it's saying light rose from the dead. Now, if you still want to be lost and come up with arguments, I just gave you an argument. Okay, well, you're saying God's spirit. Now, like I told you, the spirit ain't, the spirit ain't the light. That's a higher version of law. 
it's a higher version of lostness to say your spirit is the light because the next thing you're going to go go come to the conclusion is everything is consciousness and then that's when we have to come to the conclusion that's Archangel Uriel I'm going to have to uh, go ahead and skip steps because even though that's a higher step for y'all I'm letting y'all know as Archangel Uriel that's purgatory where you start to think spirits is light spirits don't know who they are yet so they are whoever they think they are in the fourth fifth or sixth dimension and once a spirit think that's an atom that's a first image that's an imagination that's, that, that becomes once they stay in that thought it becomes hard thoughts aka it manifests into a realm of reality. It can become a star, a chakra, a planet, whatever that ram, whatever that dream that spirit is living, living through. You see what I'm saying? So for the most part, uh, y'all run that spirit running around thinking, thinking it's the light, thinking it is what it is, knowing it is not that. And these spirits don't know how to detach from those natures, and those natures become lower animalistic natures that bring them down to lower realms of realities. This is why those spirits stay in purgatory. So all those spirits that be creating those thoughts and forms and ideas that y'all look at down here under them spirits, under those oversouls as religions, um, uh, apologetics, epistemology. I'm letting you know that these are d spirits in purgatory, demons. Spirits that have fallen, but they have they died from the realm that you are in, so they're no, they're no longer walking the earth that you are in, and they're stuck in the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension. You are in the one, two, and three dimension. If you know anything about science, so in the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension, things are lighter in frequency. So if you want to argue with me about oh thought forms, oh you, thoughts, you can't weigh them, so it, it's not actually real, but you know they actually exist. So before you even get lost into all that, you need to know that they're just lighter in frequency and vibration. So since you are in the one, two, and third dimension, if you know anything about geometry dimensions or anything or, or 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 anything in that nature then that means you're a little intelligent to know what the fuck i'm talking about right now you're not just fully religious out so for the most part we know when we talk about the fourth fifth and sixth dimension things are lighter in frequency you might just not you might just be so scientific out though you don't know how to correlate this with life so for the most part when we start to talk about thought forms when i say thought forms are physical your ass might look at me like i'm talking about pseudo so your ass you still indoctrinated even if you did go to school for 40 years to know a little bit what i'm talking about I'm talking about it from the pure space, though. You need to know that in the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension, thoughts are actual, actually physical. The reason why they can go through walls and and seem through things down here in the third dimension because it's vibrating so slow down here. So it does it didn't manifest with enough material, enough thought, enough atoms, enough mass to become a masses to become a chakra or a cloud that you could get lost in as a desire and add it up, add it in so much that it can start to determine and manifest into your physical life as a scenario, person, place, or thing, something from the periodic table. Or or whatever circumstance or situation that you want to call it. You see what I'm saying? Because when we when we have a thought as spirits that we create man. And that man be the image of our spirit. So for the, it play like water fire first. You see what I'm saying? And it's a shape and form that we can get lost into. Now all of us as spirits doing this together. And if we're all in a similar space. That means we all resonate with a certain state of being. So we all going to create a similar shape and form or a body to live in. Now since y'all been following a, spark, a spirit that led y'all into this hell kind of body. Then for the most part that lets you know what kind of state of being that you was in. To even be in this realm of reality in the first place at the moment. But at the same time, when we're talking about um, us traveling and us all creating this uh, this goddamn mentality, this damn uh, masculine energy, this man, it becomes the masses. It becomes a big light. It becomes a spectrum. You know what I'm saying? It becomes the realm of reality that we are living in when an atom gets, gets enough atoms and it becomes a masses. You see what I'm saying? So for the most part, that gives off light spectrum, as scientists would say it. That's what gives off light spectrum when a bunch of atoms come together. But now they're trying to find out what created an atom while being in a laboratory creating hundreds and thousands and billions of atoms at hand every time they think. You see what I'm saying? So the moment that they receive an influence with their spiritual nature, it, it gives off how they react to it when they filter it through their lights, their mentalities. And that men, that's that's what men is. Man, father. Uh, and then for the most part, that becomes, uh, in, the, in the lightest frequency of it, is micro. So as an atom, then once a bunch of thoughts get added on to in that same space, it becomes mi macro, 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 macro to the point that we get DNA, to the point that we get the physical realm of reality that we actually see today as motherfucking spirits. Tell me I'm goddamn lying. Now let's check this out. So... That's first man. That's what you need to understand. So when I say first man, don't even get lost into first because they know telling what was the first thought. Because as spirits, we was creating a bunch of things. It's just if you're in this realm of reality right now, you got lost into a desire because you got lost you got lost following a spirit that got lost into a thought and you wanted to know how to create a thought also. But us as spirits, we create many things in a whole bunch of different realm of realities. We don't always create men. We create a whole bunch of different concepts and situations and circumstances. You know what I'm saying? Men just means the masculine realm that we could create yang in. So you have a feminine and masculine version of men. 
feminine and masculine version of men is what we call females uh, and and males and what we and what we call the the super masculine energy and the super feminine energy down here that's being portrayed as feminine is receiving or the socket and masculine is pushing out or or the plug and positive feminine to be negative you see what I'm saying? But in all realms of reality, we need to know that when you're externally pushing out something, that is what that is what mass or that is what masculine masculine energy is or mentality is. And when you're receiving something, that is what feminine energy is. Going in, internal, yin, being a jinn. So anytime this is why religion people, they're lost. They always turn in star man into a man. So for the most part, they, they cast out women. Because women got the feminine energy, but they don't understand that they're really talking about going within. And anytime a, per a spirit get lost within, that's a spirit getting lost into their internal lights. A.K.A. they get lost in their inner waters, their inner lights. And too many lights together creates blindness. You know what I'm saying? So for the most part, when you get too lost into your feminine energies, right, it's almost like you bit the fruit. Because you're getting lost in one of your desires. And as a spirit, you're willing to do whatever it takes to obtain that desire. And a lot of times, the desires destroy us. You see what I'm saying? So that's what it means by Eve. You know what I'm saying? You're going into your nighttime. You know what I'm saying? You're going into the unseen realm that's not seen. You're going into your feminine energy. And when they say Adam, the reason why Adam bit the fruit after Eve, because the thought form is the second coming. So Adam is the thought form. The thought form come after the influence. So Adam was the first thought. And it started thinking about the desires. And once it started thinking too hard about the desires, it started to get this. Your thought is the spaceship you get lost into as a spirit. And you, you as a spirit, you die with that desire. Because anytime we create an image, a thought, a desire, anytime we push them out externally, it has an expiration date. You know what I'm saying? And depending on how much energy you put into it, that's going to be the time percentage of that expiration date. A.K.A. something get ready to transform. A.K.A. you gave birth to something that's getting ready to die. Whether it's a thought form, feeling, or emotional, or physical. So for the most part, this is the purest way of understanding the Bible and things of that nature. But, you know what I'm saying? When we talk about Adam, Adam thought about the desire. And then once you think about your desires and think about them too hard, then boom, you lose yourself. And then you become, um, it's like you become naked. You know what I'm saying? Because you no longer have a defense system. You no longer have morals. You know what I'm saying? You no longer have um, conviction. You know what I'm saying? You no, you no longer have um, your individuality. You have got lost in duality. You have got lost into the ways of the world. You have got lost into a desire. So therefore, uh, now you have you got to go put on some clothes. You got to go put on some shelter. You got to cover up these things. AKA, that just means create lies. And we know once a lie starts, it can never end. So once a lie, a lie is created, it gets manifested into realms of reality. So what we call things like, like children. But your children ain't just, I ain't talking about physical terms right now. Your children is the things that you create, all things you create and care for. You see what I'm saying? So, this is what the Bible is trying to get you to represent and understand. You know what I'm saying? The feminine and masculine energies and things of that nature. Where the masculine is the light and the feminine is the ability to receive light. You know what I'm saying? Or to be in a certain state of being where you could create a masculine energy. And that's the second coming. So, anytime you hear... Uh, let us make man in our image. Uh, when we say let us as spirits, that's us. And we're saying let us make man in our image. Let us make our mentalities in our image. Let us make our thoughts in our image. And slowly but surely that will manifest into a realm of reality that we can all jump into, in, into that body and live out that realm of reality. You know what I'm saying? But we have got lost into the wrong body based upon the spirit y'all have been following. That been creating Mount Sinai's and Mount Hermes and shit. Creating her hermeneutics and shit like that and apologetics. You know. But. You need to know that these is talking about the it's talking about the masculine and feminine energy. But whoever Peter and Paul was, or whoever created the Bible and things of that nature, have turned Star Man into a man. So now Star Man, aka a starlight, which is a, ma a macro light, have been turned in have been turned into a man, an actual man, to the point that you cannot worship the light anymore. You worship a man that's giving you the light. So a man have to give you the word. Because I told y'all light is information. You know what I'm saying? So for the most part, you we speak like a dragon, you speak your fire. So for the most part, a word is a sword. So when a man gives you the word, you have an, a, a physical representation of a man giving you a thought form, giving you an idea. And if that thought form or idea is intellectually higher than others, you're going to look up to that light because that light is going to be praised or pushed up. And for the most part, throughout the generations of civilizations, you guys end up worshiping that thought form. And whatever that thought form consists of, a.k.a. we said light. We know light. That's masses. Adam. That thought form is light. We know it's information. And whatever information it consists of, whatever people follow that group, of, whatever group of spirits follow that state of being, is going to uh, praise that and do whatever it takes to uphold that light. You see what I'm saying? So, for the most part, it comes down to humanity worship thought forms. 
So for the most part, before you think that you're worshiping a God, you need to know that you're worshiping a man, a man or a woman that create a woman that created a, a feminine version of the masculine energy, woman or a man. You, you're worshiping their thought forms or you're worshiping their idea about something. You see what I'm saying? So you're not actually worshiping a God. You're worshiping another man's or woman's idea about something. So you worship a thought form. You need to know that. You worship a thought form, right? And as spirits, we create thought forms. Now, if you believe in yourself, you're in the real spiritual realm where the actual God will be actually at. But as long as you are indoctrinated into your forms of language and, and, and all these ways of being lost, and as long as you are emotionally attached to these things, you are emotionally attached to this realm. Because as a spirit, once you leave this body, you won't do nothing but come back to things that represent your state of being. And if things that represent your state of being is all things of this world, I don't care how you look at it. You just lost in the world. It might be in a religion. And you give your life and spirit to it because you think it's the right thing to do. But I'm telling you, as Archangel Uriel, that's something of the world. Because it has a language, it has and it has things behind it, and now you are emotionally tied to it. So a spirit made you do that. You didn't you didn't convince yourself that. You did that from another spirit. No way around it. You see what I'm saying? So you've been following a demon that just know how to talk to you real good. So just because they called this demon a god way back in the days, that doesn't mean that that god wasn't a demon. Because it was a, otherwise it wouldn't be still here two thousand years later wanting y'all to praise it because it don't because it's scared to leave purgatory in some way, shape, or form. You see what I'm saying? So. You need to know that it created a thought form that you worship. And since that spirit is no longer walking this world, that is is leading you right to where it's at. So it want to come back down here, but it's leading you right to its darkness. But you think it's that heaven. So you need to understand that you worship a thought form. And, uh... You know, you just worship somebody else's idea about things. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I got to get back to uh, readings and shit like that. But I wanted to make this short and sweet, even though this video ain't even short and sweet. But, yeah, who was the first man? No, that's the wrong, that's the wrong concept. What was the first man? And the first man was thought. And thought is the atom, a.k.a. the smallest, the micro version of light. Uh, mass is very light in mass. It's very light in weight. And when you get a lot of mass coming together, a lot of thoughts coming together, it creates a light spectrum. So if you got a billion of spirits all having thought forms, what the fuck you think you're going to end up seeing in the goddamn sky all together? A big-ass cloud, a big-ass body of water, a.k.a. that's what stars are. Stars are water. You know what I'm saying? So when you hear things coming or deriving out of the water, now you don't have to get lost into the conclusion that, oh, water fell on Earth. No, Earth is on water. Stars are water. All stars are water. So if you've never seen a big-ass ocean um, before, look at the sun. Look at the moon. Look at Jupiter. Look at the stars. That's a big-ass ocean. You know what I'm saying? And then you get all the way, and then you get to the big-ass ocean that we're on. But based upon an ocean being so big, a star is another word for a, ma a macro version of an ocean, right? Since this run is rotating so big and you so small, then you can only particularize it based upon your geographical location. So you got your seas, you got your rivers, Mediterranean seas and rivers and shit like that and things of that. But you're just separating one big water rotation. Now, one big ass water run rotation, if you want to know how it look, look up in the goddamn sky. Look like one of those things. And that's what we on. So it ain't no goddamn such thing as water on earth. Earth is on fucking water. Whatever materialized that's periodic table or or, or dirt or, or, or the shit, the soil, whatever the fuck that y'all see and that's deriving out of the motherfucking turf that y'all want to call earth, that shit came up out of the water. Not the other way around. Flight boss, bitch. Goddamn air. Eee.